So yeah, so um, I'm going to talk. So first of all, a little bit about myself. Um, uh, based in Austria, uh, we're, we're a, a around 500 people consulting company, and uh, yeah, branching a little bit out into into AI and products, and found a really interesting use case that we wanted to share with you guys today about real life AI use. And uh, yeah, and I'll do a little demo afterwards if 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 it works out. Yeah. So. Um, I know my slides, I'll start with the following. Um, the <laughs> uh, we just heard that two days ago, uh, NVIDIA CEO talking about, uh, talking about how you know, kids should not learn to program anymore because it won't be relevant, right? Did you guys hear that? It won't be relevant in, in, in a couple of years. And why? Because AI will do the programming for us, right? And so um, it can't even put the slides on, let alone do programming. But uh, the reality is uh, it, it what we see in 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 real in the real world is that um, enterprises are nowhere near ready to do anything with it, right? They could do POC after POC after interesting edge cases, but it doesn't really move the needle, right? We heard an interesting use case right now, but this is this is rare. This is rare. This is not what what everyone has right now. Uh, oh, there it is. All right, cool. Yeah. So um, got the clicker. All right. So, so yeah, so what we're going to talk about is legacy code migrations, right? Legacy code migrations assisted by AI because this is the reality that we're in. And yeah, we love skiing too, <laughs> based in Austria, so love to be here. So yeah, so the reality is, um, yeah, okay, first of all, it's difficult to make predictions, but uh, making a prediction that you shouldn't be learning, uh, you shouldn't be teaching programming to kids is, a, is, a, yeah, is really a wake-up call. Uh, but what we see is, best an example of a bank uh, of a customer of ours is, okay, we got a ton, we got a ton of uh, legacy code. Can we use this new technology to do something with it, to migrate it into a modern platform? Um, we're estimating close to 6,000 person days, and then, then we're talking actual effort. And, and this is just the analytics part of SaaS. I know if you guys remember SaaS, it's alive and healthy, used in many uh, uh, you know, organizations in the, in the finance sector especially, because uh, you've been running you know, uh, scripts and, and doing you know, visualizations and, and calculations and analytics uh, prior to, I don't know, the rise of Python and, and, and the likes. So let me start with a case study to just frame the problem here, and then I'm going to talk about our, you know, how, 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 we, how we go about solving this. So yeah, so, so on the one hand, we have a ton of, of human-generated uh, code, right? Uh, you know, written over a course of 30 years, and then some, some machine-generated code. And so the question was, is there something we could do uh, to, 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 su to, to support the migration with AI? And uh, yeah, or, or is it just good for ChatGPT just writing LinkedIn posts, <laughs> helping out with you know, uh, uh, text at school? Uh, yeah, and so this is where we started our work on this, on this product, essentially, to develop a product uh, that could help kind of automate uh, and infuse AI in the entire chain of how we'd normally go about, you know, migrating these uh, these massive amounts of legacy code. Um, to set the stage again for for um, SaaS, it's yeah, it's it's still used a lot. The average age is way above forty uh, for for a SaaS developer, uh, and so um, yeah, so a lot of uh, a lot of people want to migrate to Python now now these days, and um, you know. They keep, they keep teaching these newer kids um, SAS because they can't get away from it. Uh, I hope no one's here from SAS. <laughs> Be, right, because, because they, they are, there's a major initiative to migrate, and so this is kind of like the SAP HANA kind of moment of truth, whether you go all in or, or you kind of uh, get, get out of SAS. And so this was the challenge that we were, you know, th that was posted to us about, you know, nine months ago. Yeah. And so I'm not going to repeat the previous, um, the previous talk, you know, mentioned that, you know, the expected productivity from using Gen AI across many things uh, that you currently do in, I don't know, data and software development is, is going to be huge, right? And this was kind of the, the, the estimates that we heard from, 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 from a couple of studies, including McKinsey. Uh, and then the question was, can we verify this in practice? Can we actually build something that replicates these results with a real enterprise use case? And so what we did is basically created a product that I'll show you guys in a moment that basically says the following. Look, we have, you know, new models are coming out every two weeks, right? We're not going to innovate by creating the best model because, you know, or, or there's others doing that. 
uh, there's um, the human in the loop is not going anywhere. In fact, um, we're going to need more of those humans in the loop with the knowledge uh, to kind of bridge the gap between the enterprise, legacy, old school, successful, <laughs> actual running things, and, and things that we might want to do because they're cool and new and, um, uh, and running the cloud. Yeah, and so uh, kind of um, create these uh, this workflows in a tool. Right, so um, what we do right now is to say, look, the SaaS case is a massive one, but we also see, and you guys are going to laugh about this, a lot of COBOL and PL1 code still around, and, and tons of it, right? Uh, you know, banking, airlines, um, logistics, um, uh, auto companies, like everyone runs on that still, right? So um, uh, how do we get away from it? And so we figured, okay, well, maybe we could do uh, create AI agents for all of those language pairs. And, you know, we heard some of these things like uh, retrieval augmented generation, vector databases, um, you know, actually, the we use that, of course, and plus we use things like uh, regular expressions and tons of them, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and a lot of filtering and actually understanding the, the, the how a particular programming language is used in a particular use case uh, and trying to optimize the way we use an AI models to, uh, to, to help uh, come to, to some, some sort of a reasonable code translation uh, that you can easily kind of fix and, and test and, and, and then deploy to, to, for it to actually work. And so that was our that was our, our, our premise, and 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 so, yeah, um, what we found out in 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 the project is it actually gives right about fifty percent efficiency, which is which I think is significant, right? This isn't something that uh, that you can say, well, it's just going to automate uh, you know our jobs away. Well, maybe some of these people that are close to retirement can actually go to, and retire, but uh, but for everyone else, that's actually a, a great a great um, a great way to augment their expertise. Uh, with 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 uh, yeah, with a tra with 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 an immediately translated code that actually is um, very close to what you'd consider uh, yeah something um, uh, workable, right? So the uh, for, for example, with different levels of complexity, and you, just to give your background on, on on the SAS scripts, right? The SAS scripts are mostly you know what you would consider like data analytics, um, um, you know, and, and 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 data transformation. So that trans translates quite well into something like Python. We optimized it for Snowpark and for Python with Jupyter uh, to, to, to be able to run both with the uh, in-memory uh, Jupyter for like business users and on Snowpark for like the heavy ETL, uh, ETL things in the back uh, to utilize kind of the, the, the compute power on the Snowflake side. But yeah, overall, uh, we, we bring down the cost, of the, the cost of the project from like 6,000 person days to 2,800, uh, some that vicinity. And um, and yeah and 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 this is the this is kind of uh, what uh, where we finally see say okay this AI stuff actually helps out in the job of data engineering right and in the job of 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 real real world use cases now the human in the loop we heard also earlier the human in the loop is very important right the human in the loop is not going away uh, in fact um, they can only be empowered uh, by by a solution like this and. To be honest with you guys, like my, in our view is, okay, we're creating our own product on this, but so are others that we've heard in the industry, some of the major players. What we expect is in five years from now, this is going to be part of your standard. Having a tool like this is gonna be part of your standard, I guess, way you do uh, enterprise data engineering work for, for customers, right? Or if you're, a, uh, if you're on the business side, if you're on the actual enterprise side, this is, this is how you're going to migrate your own kind of legacy um, leftover codes from, 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 from years ago. And so um, it, it's about how to empower th this human in the loop so that they could be productive in, or most productive in doing that uh, by using AI. Right, so uh, yeah, and uh, we're going to obviously um, how, uh, also give this out to other consulting companies to use um, uh, just as a, as a, as a product that um, they could help them uh, work, solve their uh, their customers' needs, and and if you're on the enterprise side, obviously your own teams' needs, right? So this was uh, I didn't want to go into a lot of details on on, on the slides, but essentially um, uh, the um, success of this is, is has been verified, and this is um, uh, this to me was new. I'm always skeptical about okay, uh, you know, it can generate nice images, but can it actually help me <laughs> do some actual work that I have today? And uh, and it and, and it can. So um, I think I'm um, well in time. I will, I will do a short demo of the product maybe, 
uh, for you guys to see. The human in the loop is required, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, here it is. All right, awesome. All right, so uh, we talked about this AI agents, right? So uh, having, you know, it, 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 we found it to be like, if you, if you take like a standard, uh, like a standard chat GPT and try to do this, yeah, the, obviously with parts of it, you have partial success. It doesn't really scale to like translating two million lines of code. Uh, and so uh, it, it doesn't, for, for, for various reasons, right? It, does, it, it doesn't scale because um, first of all, of, of the context limits, right? Uh, secondly, because um, it, it's just not optimized to deliver the output that you need for that particular for that particular um, outcome or target. You, you have to consider that you, also, you have kind of the source legacy code, and you have kind of the target um, architecture uh, that you want this optimized for uh, for your particular case. Um, the best example of this is if you just try to uh, open ChatGPT and convert SAS to Python, uh, it gives you it gives you a SAS version of of of, of Python that doesn't really <laughs> migrate you really away from it. And so um, yeah, so we built the, the different AI agents for the for the different um, for the different language pairs, and um, uh, some some of them actually work work, work quite well. Uh, right. So that's that. I mean, obviously, uh, consider that the, uh, my, a migration project is. Is a very complex project. You got project managers, business analysts. You got you know all sorts of business people that have to provide input to verify and test, and uh, and you have the technical team that's left stuck with all of this, trying to make sense of it, uh, and, uh, and 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 bring it to completion. So yeah, you could do projects. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 it basically gets um, um, uh, like uh, like uh, you, you get like a, uh, already um, a list of files. Uh, it estimates the complexity of those files and tries to, um, uh, yeah, and tries to help you out uh, with uh, with doing the migrations, right? You need users, roles, and all that kind of stuff. The code converter is a is a VS um, is a VS Code plugin, and um, I'm just going to give you one example. Um, like th this is what the usual SAS code looks like, right? So um, you know, get some some data steps, some SQL, and and the question is, uh, you know. Uh, can we get this in Python, right? So here's hoping it will work because we need internet for this. Yeah. So so then we start with our tool. We start the, tra the, the transformation, and we have down below we see GPT 3.5. We have the different agents, like which model uh, we, we're going to use. Um, one interesting um, thing is that GPT 3.5 uh, with with our tool scores, in our opinion, better than GPT 4 uh, without without the tool. 
uh, and uh, and we rarely use GPT-4. Uh, some of those more complex uh, scripts, uh, it takes about uh, an hour and a half, almost two hours to just translate like like 2,000 lines of code. And so, and so th there you get in the first uh, in the first step. Uh, the tool, uh, what we did is we basically enter comments to this, right? So we now we have a, a, a code that's commented and we can actually make sense of it. Most of the code we see that's grown over the ages, you, you, yeah, best thing is I see a comment from 1999, someone in 1999. It's like, <laughs> does this person even exist yet? Uh, and and um, so you're left with uncommented code. So one of the things we do is uh, we comment it. And then we go right into the translation piece, right? So there you go. This is the first translated, translated it's just translated uh, on the fly, and and it looks like like reasonable thing that will run, right? If we actually go into, um, and 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 actually were to run it, it will run, um, right? So 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 this is a, this is a good example of 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 taking a, a, a SAS script, uh, and and for some of these things like I don't know, we, we, let's consider a, a SAS that has like a like a function. Like I didn't know what a fin function is, right? And so if I go and translate it, uh, it will. It will actually tell me that it uh, calculates the inverse of the F distribution, right? Oh, and also tells you what the parameters are that you need to pass on, onto this, right? So, uh, so that immediately kind of helps you out. And if you're a developer or, or a data engineer and, and trying to, to complete this, you're already starting from a very good pace. Uh, does it do everything uh, in a great way? Uh, the answer is no. And this is why we continue to invest and develop uh, the agents so that, uh, for example, we have an agent that maximizes SQL that comes out of it. Right? So if you say, well, I don't want to do everything in data frames, uh, just build SQL for me, and you could, you, you, you could set this up on a file level. I know I'm going to a lot of technical de details here, but I'm assuming you're all technical nerds. So if, if someone <laughs> feels they want to get the business information, then um, yeah, then I'll uh, talk about that as well. So, um, right, so, so that was the code conversion. Um, and um, yeah, and, and, and in a sequential way, we kind of eat the elephant piece by piece. Uh, by actually, um, uh, you know, um, helping uh, translate this. Uh, in our experience, and you got a ton of project management tools, but it also covers some of the project management issues because you start a project like this and you don't know where you are, how far you are. So this automatically gives you kind of the project management uh, aspects like, you know, what's the status of these files, what's in scope, what's translated, what's not. Um, we, we do show some analytics on it. Um, we were just joking yesterday with Joe that, uh, yeah, whenever you see this kind of uh, pie charts, that's, that's BS. Um, yeah, uh, but it so sometimes helps you uh, get the overview of like, it, 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 where you build successful across all of those, um, uh, across all of those files uh, within those projects, right? And we get a, a, an interesting estimate on the complexity uh, of, of uh, you know, for example, libraries used or the languages in, in the project uh, and, and kind of uh, whether, whether we see most of the scripts in low, medium, or high complexity. Uh, this really helps out uh, tackle, uh, especially in the beginning when you, when you start a major, a major um, um, tr uh, code translation project to understand how big of a, of a trouble you're in. Uh, how, how much is uh, you know work is ahead of you and uh, and, and yeah and how to tackle it, right? So um, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, yeah. That's a very good question because uh, mo uh, not, not all of it, but some of it is. Hmm? So the, the question is how do we ensure that the agents are actually um, um, outputting something relevant to, let's say, the example is a credit risk, uh, uh, you know, a, a credit risk model. Some of the stuff that we did for, 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 the, for this particular bank is credit risk, you know, just migrating this uh, highly, highly regulated, highly, um, um, yeah audited uh, models uh, and and we did uh, what we did is on top of it a lot of templating and examples right so we, we, we bring a, a lot of examples of what a good translation of a credit risk model looks like uh, and try try to, to get the output to be as, as best as, as possible to what uh, to, uh, to, to what the experts define as a good as a good translation it's especially relevant one of the things that I want to mention is that part of this and as is not the coolest thing but very highly relevant to those projects is having an audit trail that you can d afterwards, uh, because for banks, uh, migrating uh, credit risk models, 
is something you, you need excellent uh, auditability for, right? Yeah. Uh, in, in what sense? You mean uh, um, data protection or? Uh, yeah, so so the, the, this uh, so the interesting thing about this is if you already have a data warehouse and and you're you you you're basically just migrating the logic to 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 work to to, to calculate your data you're not migrate you're not changing the data lineage in, in, in much right so you 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 work off of an Oracle data warehouse or off of a Snowflake data warehouse with the SAS and after that from your Jupyter or from your Yeah, it's a it's a good question. It, it it all depends on how much data transformation you have in the code, right? If you do if you change the link, if you just basically at the very end of the chain where you're basically saying, okay, I'm just gonna calculate this PD, LGD, whatever parameters, right? And and, and that's it, um, in the simplest sense. Then it, then it, then it's not so difficult. If you're saying I'm I'm migrating scripts that create a data set that creates a data set that does something else, and then that mixes up your lineage. But that's a very valid question, and, and this actually <laughs> brings us to to the complexity of of a, of a of a of a migration like this, right? And and of of how wrong maybe uh, Jensen was from Nvidia, <laughs> thinking that we don't need to learn programming, right? But yeah, uh, th th this comes along. Is there any other questions? All right, so thanks everyone, happy to chat. <laughs>